Do you ever think about your childhood? I often go back to this moment where I felt the most carefree. But things would soon change from this moment on that would shape how I lived my life. This was the first time I felt so scared and helpless. I couldn't understand why my mother was so angry. Oh, it's all done already. Why not already? We're running late for mass. Look at your Sunday. You better clean up this mess now. I must, I must have really picked you up. It's useless. Rubbish bin. Those words were etched into the very core of my being. All I heard from them that day was that I was good for nothing. I was useless. Everything I did was a mistake. Since then, I vowed not to make any more mistakes, not to make my parents angry, and to be more useful. Okay, class. I'll be giving out your test papers. Joe? My parents often told me to pray to God, well. ask Him for help. So I prayed hard and worked hard. Ma! But nothing seemed to change my streak of failing at things. Phil! I have to call your mother to have a talk with her. No, Mr. Tan, please don't call my mother. I will try harder next time. This is not the first time, Ma. We even went through all these questions in class. You're really hopeless. How much you got? Good things must share there. I felt so afraid of going home to show my parents my results. I didn't want to cause them more trouble and I didn't want to be scolded again. Although I prayed to ask God for help, I still failed. It felt as if God ignored my prayers. He didn't come to help me. Perhaps he too was angry with me. And in that moment, I believed that God didn't care. God created me to fail. God would never help me. Yes, I do, but... Better work harder next time, huh? If not, I'll have you easily replaced. I thought that my fear of failing would disappear once I no longer had to study for exams. But it continued to haunt me even as an adult in my career. At this point, I had stopped praying or asking God for help. I resigned to the thinking that I would never make it in life and I would always remain a failure. You're so useless. I don't even know why I hired you. I can't get anything wrong. How many times have I told you to be more careful in dealing with the clients? You're really making sort of slip at your level, Ma. I'm really disappointed. You are supposed to get this project out for the board of directors. What do you expect me to tell them now? You really gotta work harder than this, Ma. You don't deserve this job if you keep slacking off like this. Even an intern can do better than this. What's wrong with you? Maybe you could 
with the punch bag for us. <laughs> uh, could I have lunch with you then? Sure. Mark, you know that this project isn't everything, right? You've helped us get so many other bigger projects. Joy, you don't understand. At this point of time, none of those projects matter anymore. You know, big boss, I bet one day she's really going to cut me. You know how she is, Ma. You've been working with her for some time. She probably just had a bad day and just taking it out on you. You're a great employee, Ma. You're doing well. Can I pray for you? What's the point of praying, Joy? I prayed for years, but nothing has changed. You know, all my life. I've called out to God for help, but he has never once answered me. All I've heard from him is condemnation. Too much of a failure for him to bother. That's not true, Mark. God isn't condemning you, and it's perfectly human for all of us to make mistakes. God isn't abandoning you just because you think you are a failure. I've known you for some time, Mark. I've always seen you beating yourself up just because you think you're not perfect. God isn't like that. He wants to help you. He wants to assure you. Maybe it's time to start listening. My dear friends, maybe you can relate to Mark. You tried to be good your entire life, but all you feel is that you fall short of expectations. To you, God is a distant God, and He doesn't care about you. I've been there. In the past, I doubted if God really loved me. In primary school, I was bullied, and I wore various masks to try to fit in. I did this because I felt I wasn't man enough. And with this also, I live in a constant fear of failing. To me, God was just a vending machine, and our relationship was transactional, and there was no trust in it. In the school of witness, someone had an image of me actually riding a motorcycle, going down quite a, a big road and a fast speed, with, and I was all smiles. And she told me that was the freedom that I desired. And in that, I was quite amazed because that was actually the exact feeling of freedom that I love. And another thing that really amazed me is that she didn't even know that I rode a motorcycle. It was at that moment that I realised that God really knew how to communicate straight through me, right into my heart, and that He understood me at that point in time. It's like, you know, when God leaves the 99 sheep to find the lost one, God knew exactly where to find me and how to find me. You know, at that point in time also I realised that God was relentlessly chasing after me, and He has never given up, and He's always been beside me. At one of the masters, I saw an image of a, a heart with nails, and in these nails, it was all my sins. And as I tried to remove the nails, the heart just kept bleeding, and I couldn't stop it. And so what I did was just I just plugged it back so that it would stop bleeding, and I continued to live a sinful life. And slowly, the image developed into Jesus coming, plucking out the nails, stitching up the wounds, and laying his healing hands on it so that the bleeding would stop. I mean, how amazing is that? Is all right. Um, so to me, that was like, it really sealed the deal for me. It felt that, you know, Jesus was telling me that I don't care how blemished you are, how scarred you are, I want you for who you are. And in that also, I felt that He loves me for who I am, imperfect as I am. So, out of all this, I realized that God is not a distant God, neither is He a vending machine. God is one that will chase after you, God is one that will hold you. For me, He is the good friend that I can confide in in good times and in bad. You know, he's the warrior that really fights with me throughout all my struggles, all my insecurities and my fears. He's also the warrior and he's the compass that really guides me throughout my entire life. 
I might not have seen it, but now after attending the School of Witness, this has really opened my eyes to see that actually God has been beside me all the way. You know, I think looking back also, I might not have understood why God placed certain people in my life or certain things have happened to me. But when I think about it, it's actually because He is the master painter and I'm the master's piece of art. So now I can really trust in Him fully and His plans for me. So my friends, will you let Jesus work in your life today and will you trust Him to move your hands and your legs and your feet and your mouth to really just go with Him and trust His plans.